research methodology. Now, what to include in your research methodology? Obviously, you start by defining your population. So what is your population that you are interested in? So your target population, your samples, and then based on your study, the need for your study, your sample size, and the adequate sampling technique that you want to use. If you are doing a PhD from Pakistan, then there is a very, very potent dilemma that most of this, the academic, academics, they, they prefer probability sampling. And they said that you cannot do PhD without probability sampling, to which I strongly disagree. Because probability sampling is one of the most difficult sampling techniques to carry out. If, obviously, they ask you to do stratified or simple random sampling. So, but in papers, we normally, I normally use convenience sampling and I've, I've seen people using or researchers using convenience sampling. If you've got access and if you can justify or if you can, if you can make sure that you can have probability sampling technique, obviously you can go for that as well. Now, how did you distribute the questionnaire? Uh, rather than uh, going directly on to the question dis distribution, I think uh, this should have been the point three rather. I'm sorry for the typo. Uh, your questionnaire sources. Uh, from where did you uh, like what are the sources of the questionnaire who developed the questionnaire how many items were there any sample items or the whole questionnaire can be attached in the appendix and if you've got data sources secondary data sources you should mention those as well how the data was collected or how the questionnaires were distributed what were your data collection techniques if it's covid did you do it online or did you visit the people in person and things like that you have to mention in your research methodology and what analysis techniques you are going to use or you will utilize or have utilized if it's a proposal obviously you will mention that you will utilize this analysis technique if it's a thesis then you would have utilized a particular analysis technique and it's always a good idea in a thesis that you mention the advantages of using this analysis technique rather than just describing the analysis techniques that you have utilized you should explain why this analysis technique is better than the other technique that are available a common difference that is drawn is between counter uh, co covariance based scm and pls uh, scm so covariance based or uh, pls scm is normally cbscm or variance based scm vbscm as they are normally called uh, normally the differentiation is done between them when you are writing your thesis and if you are reading, uh, using uh, any uh, or doing a finance or res uh, economic based research then you do present your regression model in uh, survey based research as you would recall in none of the papers that you come across normally you will see a regression equation because we do not have units of measurement that's why we do not have a regression equation now this is a sample methodology you can explain the sector as well as to why this sector is important to be studied or any particular sampling details pertinent to that particular sector. So in this case, in this study, we described the research universities and why this sample or this population or this study setting was taken. Then you define your population sample and data collection and how it was collected, your analysis technique and your measures. The sources of questionnaires, the total number of items, the Likert scale, all these are mentioned here. You start your discussion by identifying the objective of your study. So what is the objective of my study? Once you have identified the objectives of the study or written the objective of the study so that the reader can recall as to what the study was all about, you start or the purpose of, for example, the purpose of this study was to test a model to understand whether culture moderated the internal marketing practice and employee satisfaction relationship. So this was the objective of the study. Now, what were the results of the, your study and how do they compare with existing research? So my research was impact of CSR on OP and I found a positive relationship. Yes, existing research has also found a positive relationship. But this is not just enough to write about what existing research found and what you found. Instead of just comparing the results, you will have to, obviously these are the examples. You will have to explain why this relationship is significant or insignificant. Again, that aspect of why is important. 
do not just mention okay this is my research and this was my hypothesis and existing research also found in their research a significant relationship or an insignificant relationship you have to explain the reason for the significance and insignificance without this your discussion is not critical so internal marketing concept improves customer satisfaction by creating so this is the why aspect why internal marketing is linked to customer satisfaction although you found a significant relationship but why this relationship was significant and how is is this this obviously then you highlight that why certain relationship is significant internal marketing concept improves customer satisfaction by creating employee satisfaction and this consequently increases com company performance businesses aspiring to be leaders in the specific industry should therefore adopt the concept or implement the internal marketing concept because it improves our company performance how does it improve company performance why it improves company performance because internal marketing actually improves customer satisfaction and what does it show in your field so on the premise that cultural congruence has moderated the relationship between internal marketing practice and employee satisfaction for tourism and hospitality employees this study puts forth and forth puts forward an implication that internal marketing research and practice would benefit from considering cultural congruence so since the cultural aspect is moderating the relationship so the industry will benefit from cultural aspects and this will further improve the relationship another example and again use the theory if available if there is a theory that you have al already used in the literature linking the concepts then you can use that theory again to identify that yes your 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 findings are in line with the theory they are not against the theory if they are against the theory obviously you mention that your findings are not in line with the theory just as the way we did in this paper the study revealed a significant relationship between csr and team performance or rather team commitment and other variables cementing the social identity perspective that argues that when csr initiatives are adopted by the employing organization this can strengthen employee organizational identification and assist in promoting organizational performance not just identifying that yes the relationship in light of the theory is significant you have to further explain how csr actually influences organizational performance in light of the theory and then you write the conclusion in light of your research objectives of the study you write the limitations of your existing research limitations in light of the sample that you collected the data collection you did the measurement the analysis any conceptual limitations and then you mention the future research directions the future variables that could be used in further study and all the rest of those things what variables moderator mediator independent dependent that you propose for future research any other analytical techniques that you want to propose or any conceptual scope that you want to change any theory that you want our uh, future researchers to use with a particular concept and the implications of your research the theoretical implications the practical implications the theoretical implication as to what you did for the theory now that you have conducted the research those earlier were proposed contributions and now you are writing the actual contributions that you have made after the study is concluded what are the implications of your study how does it benefit the individuals within the organization how does it benefit the management how does it manage benefit the organization or the society in general what are the policy implications for your study what are the social implications for your study all these implications are very important and mind you if you are writing for a good quality journal and you have got weak implications your paper can be rejected so write implications with strength with focus and focus on all these things that i have identified